بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم رانا محمد کاشف اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی یوٹیوب چینل پازیٹیو پیپل کمیشن دس از اے انٹروڈکشن ٹو آر پروگرامنگ سیریز دس از اے فری آر کورس دس از اے فری آر کورس اینڈ وٹ وی گنا ڈو ٹوڈے جسٹ ٹو ری کیپ وٹ وی ڈیڈ ان دی پریویس ایپیسوڈ وی لرنڈ ہاؤ ویکٹرز آر کنسٹرکٹیڈ ان آر ہاؤ دے آر ریپرزینٹیڈ وٹ از دیئر سنٹیکس اینڈ ہاؤ وی کین ہینڈل مسنگ ویلیوز ان آر اینڈ ہاؤ دے آر ریپرزینٹیڈ ان آر so uh, for that you can uh, visit my previous episode to learn about these things for right now it is episode number six and what we gonna learn in this episode uh, we we gonna learn in subsetting vectors in r uh, we will learn how we can extract uh, uh, different elements from a vector based on some conditions uh, conditions could be logical uh, or some other conditions so moving on uh, what is basically subsetting in uh, r uh, what we will learn in this portion that we will learn how to extract elements of vectors based on some specific conditions as i have previously said uh, we might be interested in uh, uh, some particular uh, uh, elements of a vector rather than the whole vector and uh, Uh, we may be interested for example in first uh, 10 elements of a vector having length 50 or we want uh, some n is from a vector having some multiple entries so i am here in r studio we will uh, you will get hands on examples as well and uh, now uh, uh, let's start that what is subsetting vectors in r uh, for that uh, let's consider uh, uh, the uh, below vector x is Uh, to extract some particular elements from a vector uh, is by placing an index vector in square brackets like if we want to extract the first five elements of vector x what we gonna do we will write like x square brackets one colon five we will have the first five elements of vector x and uh, now let's do uh, with indexing of uh, logical vectors Uh, uh one common scenario when we uh, we when we are working with real world data is that we want to extract all elements of a vector that are not na uh, for example missing data we can use is dot na uh, in indexing let me write x square brackets is dot na of vector x uh, what it will do it will enlist a vector of all n is you see x has 1 2 3 4 n is so it has listed 4 n is and if we want to create a vector let's say y that contains all of the non n a values from x so we will use negation as we we have learned in the previous episode that exclamatory sign is used as a negation is dot na of vector x uh, let's print y so y does not have any na values so na values are negated by putting this exclamatory sign uh, just uh, recall that the expression y greater than 0 what what it will give it will give sorry y greater than 0 what it will it will give it will give all values of y which are positive so what it will actually give it will give us a vector of logical values of the same length as of y with trues corresponding to the value of y that are greater than 0 and false corresponding to the values which are not greater than 0 okay you can see there is only one value which is less than 0 so it has returned as false so if we want that we want vector of all positive elements of y it has given me a logical vector but if i want those elements what i will do i will use subsetting y square brackets where y is greater than 0 so it has given me elements where y is greater than 0 so you see you see it's very easy it's not that much difficult that you just have to go through these examples and uh, you will build on some more complex ones as well uh now let if if we try for x for y there were no n s now let's do it with x where are n s and if we apply some condition for example if we want p 
positive values of x but there are also n is so let's see what r does n is our return since n a is not a value but uh, rather a placeholder for an unknown quantity so the expression n a greater than 0 evaluates to n a hence we get a bunch of n is mixed in with other positive uh, numbers when we do this so it returned n a and uh, now let's try a new example to combine our knowledge of logical operators with subsetting for example x square brackets not is dot n a of x and now use the and operator as we have learned in the previous episode greater than zero what this expression is saying that give me the values of x which are not n a's and also test for the positive x values so we request only values of x that are both non-missing and greater than zero so we can use indexing in this way as well now let's move on to our next uh, type which is integer based vector subsetting so uh, integer based vector subsetting is that uh, uh, you 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 may have seen that many programming languages use uh, what's called zero based indexing uh, which means that the first element of a vector is considered element zero but r uses one based indexing uh, which you um, which i mean that the first element of a vector is considered as element one not zero for example i want uh, element number one of x so you can see that first element of x is n a and if i want uh, uh, what if I want uh, some specific elements, not a range of element as we did previously? I want third, fifth, and seventh element of x. So indexing will be like I have to put a vector third, fifth, and seventh element. So you have seen that it has extracted uh, third, fifth, and seventh element. Uh, but uh, what happens if we ask for the zeroth element? Now let's do for the zeroth element. It it returned uh, nothing useful uh, found, but unfortunately R doesn't prevent us from doing this. Uh, this should be cautionary because you should always make sure that what you are asking for is within the bounds of the vector you are working with. So zero indexing has no place in R. Uh, what if we are interested in all elements of X? except the second and tenth what we, we can do we only want we all want all indexes we want all those element ex except the second and tenth so luckily r accepts negative integer indexes as well so how we can do it let's try x square brackets see we don't want the second and tenth element what i will do i will put the minus sign before 2 and 10 so it will give me x where second and tenth element are not there okay uh, I can also use a negative sign as as a whole like minus C 2 and 10 it will give the same result now let's move on to uh, named element subsetting in R and how we can do it within R named subsetting now, now let's create a numeric vector with the three named elements let's rename it as vect is assigned as c f double of who is equal to 11 i'm just giving elements the name bar is equal to 2 and n or f is equal to na and if i print vect you can see that it has names now uh, we can also get the names of the vector by passing names function to the vector names function of the vector we will get the names of the vector foo bar and n o r f uh, now let's create an unnamed vector vect 2 having elements as 11 2 and n a 
देन वी कैन एड द नेम्स एट्रीब्यूट टू द सेकेंड वैक्टर आफ्टर द फैक्ट दैट द नेम्स ऑफ द वैक्टर आर कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग एज फॉलोज फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेम्स ऑफ वैक्ट टू आर नाओ सी फू बार एंड द लास्ट वन एन ओ आर एफ and now let's compare the vect and vect2 whether they are identical we can use the function identical vect and vect2 so it is true so it means that both are now fine and equal to each other uh, back to the matter of subsetting a vector by named elements following command will uh, give us the second element of vector for example we can how we can use the named uh, subsetting for example in vect command let's i want uh, bar so i will write inside quotes bar so it has returned me the second element of the vect along with its name so likewise we can specify a vector of names like we did here वैक्ट सी फू एंड बार सो इट हैज़ रिटर्न मी टू एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द वैक्टर सो दैट्स इट फॉर नाउ दोज वर दी सम इम्पॉर्टेंट सब सेटिंग प्रैक्टिस दैट हैव बीन फॉलोड इन आर एंड जस्ट सम कंक्लूडिंग कमेंट्स ऑन दी टूडे सेशन is that subsetting in r is a convenient way of indexing element it can be used to select and filter uh, variables and observations and uh, moreover in this tutorial what we have learned is that how to subset vectors in r using logical integer and name wise subsetting so that is now for this episode and what's coming up for the next episode number 7 In episode number seven, we will learn about matrices and data frame structures in R, and how they are represented and uh, what they mean. These are the more most powerful data structures in R, and we will learn in the next episode. I hope so. You have enjoyed the episode number six of this series, and you have learned about the subsetting in R. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz. Bye bye.